And it's Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions coming to you from Infocom 2017. And I have with me Mr. Doug Jones. Hi, pleased from, to meet you. From Danley Sound Labs. So to begin with, could you just introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Doug Jones. I'm uh, with Danley Sound Labs, as you said. And um, I got one of those jobs that uh, where I do a little bit of everything. We do training for um, using our products, uh, including our software. Um, I work with Tom on original ideas and um, do anything else they tell me to do. <laughs> yes, and you're very much the public face of Danley when it comes to the YouTube channel and so on. Well, yeah, I try to be... Uh, one, of, one of my jobs is to try to interpret Tom's ideas to the rest of the world. Um, I was a college teacher for many years, so I'm, I'm comfortable talking with people and, and explaining stuff, so that's another important part I, I, I get to play. Right. So tell us what it's like to work with uh, Tom Danley. Well, since he's not here in the room, I, I, I can... No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom is a remarkable, remarkable person. I, I am so honored to, to be friends with him and to be, uh, be able to work with him very closely. He has a, a remarkable ability to, to see things in a way that, that no one else has. So like with the development of the Synergy Horn, mm -hmm. um, it, it sometimes you wonder, well, how come nobody else thought of this? Well, because nobody else thought of it. And, and I think part of it is just his, his natural ability. Um, whenever, whenever there's an issue or a problem or a question, if everyone is looking at it from this point of view, Tom will be the one person that comes and says, well, what if we look at it from this point of view? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think some of that is, is just uh, his, his natural curiosity and his natural ability to, to ask questions in a different way. Uh -huh. Thank you. And so, so tell us a little bit more about this approach that Tom takes, how it's different from everyone else. Right. Well, I think everyone else sort of, you know, uh, stacks up loudspeakers to, to get it louder. The line array is very popular, which is really just adding multiple sources together, which really don't couple. They don't, mm. they don't create. So if you stop and think about it, you know, if you had to double the acoustic output, that's increase the acoustic output by 6 dB, and you have 10 line array boxes, I don't care whose brand you use, how many line array boxes do you have to add to that stack of 10 to get 6 dB more? Mm. I'll leave that question unanswered. I look it up. Uh, it's a lot more mm. because you certainly don't get um, a doubling of output per doubling of boxes. Mm. Um, yeah, you, you get more like 3 dB, isn't that? Right, yeah. right. So if I need 6 dB more, that 10 turns into an extremely large uh, array pretty quickly. And you think of the money and you think of the weight and you think of all of the, what that costs in terms of, you know, real money and, and, and resources. It's ridiculous. But if you stop and think of it, if I could build a horn and I could figure out the, the, the solution to the problem, how do I add more drivers to that one horn? Mm -hmm. Every time you double the amount of drivers in that horn, you get 6 dB more. They couple almost perfectly mm -hmm. in, in that horn. So you get, you, not only do you get the um, advantage of, of the coupling of the drivers, but you get the horn gain. Mm -hmm. So your efficiency goes way up awfully quickly, mm -hmm. and you can get a lot more uh, bang for your buck, if you will. Right. So when it comes to translating this principle into practical applications, could you say a bit more about that? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what you mean. I guess um, what, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people understand that although historically we, we believe that the only answer to stadium systems and music systems mm -hmm. is to hang these big these big arrays because they look impressive yeah. and because we believe that's that's the case what we're coming in we're saying okay there there is an alternative mm. there is an alternative and the alternative has savings in terms of energy but it may more importantly it has um savings in terms of weight and and truck pack and and all of these other things mm -hmm. But in my view, the most important thing is it just sounds better. Mm -hmm. I think any sound system that relies on um, interference where, where the boxes have to fight with each other, well, clearly your efficiency has to go down, but I think your sound quality suffers. Mm. Um, and so if we could build a box where the drivers were actually cooperating together, they're not fighting each other, not creating interference patterns, um, 
we could build boxes that, that actually sound good and maybe equally importantly sound good no matter where you listen to them from so there's not a, a sweet spot and then you move five feet and it's like what what just happened to to the sound it's gone yeah. so why are line arrays so popular well i think it's because that's all people know mm. and and that's one of the big challenges i think well there, there's two things i guess i want to say about that one it's it's all that people know and and what's happened is i believe that that has become the de facto standard and, and so we, we see that in sometimes when we do A-B comparisons between our stuff and, and line arrays, we sometimes see younger people choosing the line array, and you go, wow, okay, we just talked about this parameter. We talked about pattern control. You can, you can walk and see it, you know, the pattern stops here. It's where it's supposed to. You can talk about intelligibility. We can measure it. We can, and we, we clearly should have won this demo, and yet people are choosing the line array. And I think it's because... Well, because the line array has become the, the de facto standard. That's all they know. Mm. And so I guess one of my messages is to, to young engineers is to please stop listening to earbuds, <laughs> start listening to loudspeakers, and start demanding that your loudspeakers sound as good as your earbuds do, because they can and they should. And, and also, presumably, start listening to real music. Well, I can't comment on, I mean, every generation calls the other guy's generations bad music. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 60s. My parents forbade me to listen to rock and roll. But, but you know, um, I, certainly being aware of what real instruments sound like is important. But, but, yeah, developing a sense of oral aesthetic, you know, what is good sound? And demanding that of your sound system. Don't settle for, for a PA system that doesn't sound as good as it possibly can. Uh, there, there can be better speakers out there. There are better speakers out there. You may not have heard them yet, but I can assure you they do exist. And I believe that you know, your generation, the younger generation, your music deserves that just like mine did. Um, so I guess that would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So could you say something about the new products that are coming out from Danley this year? Right, we've got a, a new uh, addition to our Jericho line and our Jericho are, are really large synergy horns that, that all um, incorporate multiple high-frequency drivers as well as multiple woofers uh, in a single horn. So the, the J6 is our newest uh, version of the combiner, and the combiner is that, that engine, if you will, that, that takes the, the output of um, all of the drivers and combines it into one wavefront that then enters the horn and then expands into mm -hmm. the coverage. So we, we keep, or Tom keeps pushing the, the envelope on how to build that combiner, making it more simple, make it more effective. And that's what we believe the J6 is. Right. Yeah. And tell us something about the smaller speakers that are coming out. Because as you've said, you know, in interviews before, with sound size matters right. because of the, the, wave, the wavelengths involved. Well, you know, one of the things we get criticized for is that maybe we're not as, you know, line arrays are, are cool because they are um, completely scalable. So you could put up four boxes or 20 boxes or whatever. Uh, we, we come back to that by saying, okay, um, we're going to try to build a family of loudspeakers so that you can choose the speaker that fits your application. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have uh, relatively small boxes, and we do have large boxes, and, and every year we keep developing. We, we try to pay attention to what the industry is asking us for, mm -hmm. and so we try to develop the boxes that, that respond to that. And this year we have... Um, uh, we have a, what you refer to as the utility box. Yeah, the utility box is a, is a relatively small, we have a really small thing we're calling the Nano, which is a little plastic uh, box, which is a single driver, and it, it sounds really good for, for being what it is. Um, technically, it's not a Synergy horn, it's just one driver. Um, and we've got, you know, as I said, the J6, and there's a few other products that um, uh, we're, I, I don't, actually, I'm not sure what we're, what we're showing. Um, we were thinking of showing a new, uh, small Jericho, but uh, that may not be on the floor at the moment. Mm. And for, for somebody who is who needs something small, this is obviously a way into the Danley product line, isn't it? Right. right. We do have some small speakers that, that mount on, uh, on poles, mm. and we, we hope to develop that line even more um, because we're, we're known in some circles as the guys that build the big speakers for the stadiums, but we also have speakers that work very well for the you know, for the gigging musician or the small church or the small, you know, assembly right. 
Yeah, so we, we have a pretty complete line at the moment. Wonderful, thank you. And finally, what advice would you give to up-and-coming sound engineers? I think there, there were two things. Probably the most important thing I would say to any sound engineer is protect your ears. Protect your ears. Please, please protect your ears. Um, whether you're wearing earbuds or headphones or listening to loud stacks, um, you, you don't believe it, but you're going to pay for this when you're my age. So protect your hearing. Secondly is develop a sense of oral aesthetic. Know what you like and what you don't like in terms of the way something sounds. Not, not the content of the material so much because that, that comes and goes. You may like this artist, you might not like that artist or whatever, but what I'm talking about is listen to the sound, the quality of the sound, is it what you want? Mm -hmm. um, and keep pushing uh, for the best that you can get mm -hmm. and demand the best from your, your loudspeakers. And when you say oral aesthetic, how, how can people better develop an oral aesthetic? Would it be through listening to certain types of recordings or certain types of live music? What do you think? Yeah, to me, an oral, an oral aesthetic is developed through listening, but listening critically. So what is it I like about the sound? What is it I don't like about the sound? Try to put words to that. It's very hard to put words to some of these things. Some of these things... Um, have no words to describe them. And so coming up with a vocabulary um, that helps you develop a sense of what I like and what I don't like, I think is a really important part. Wonderful. And where can people go to learn more about Danley products? You can go to our website, uh, danleysoundlabs.com. We have a Facebook uh, page, uh, Danley, Danley Sound Labs. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that uh, you can find on our website. And um, we also have a newsletter you can sign up for on our website that, that um, tries to keep people up to date on our new developments and, uh, you know, who is doing what in the Danley family. Right. Yeah. And training as well. Training as well. That's right. Yeah. Right. I, read a, our, uh, boom. I read an article every, uh, every month in our, in our newsletter that's aimed at really the entry-level people into the business. You know, what, um, how do we <laughs> – that sounded weird. <laughs> Catering is dropping Catering stuff is backstage. backstage here. So I was saying I write, a, I write an article in our newsletter every month that, that really tries to address some really basic issues about audio that people may be embarrassed to ask because it's like, well, I, I feel like I should understand this. So it's a good place to go for those questions you have that you may be too embarrassed to ask anybody else. Wonderful. Yeah. So, Dr. Jones, Danley Sound Labs, thank Thanks you so much. My pleasure.